This is the Alienware AW3225QF. It's a 4K 32-inch 240Hz curved QD OLED gaming monitor. That's right, ladies and gents, it's got a 1700R curve. It's super immersive, but is it any good and is it worth your hard-earned money? Let's find out. This panel's been out for a little while, but we've had a lot of requests to cover Alienware monitors, so we made it happen. As far as how much this panel will cost you, usually I'd leave this to a little bit later in the video, but here it is, 999 US dollars, or around about 1900 Aussie dollars, give or take, depending on where you're looking. You can get this for about $1,500 at the moment here in Australia, but you know, that's just how it is because it's been out for a while. As far as specs, the AW3225QF features a 31.6 inch 3840 by 2160 QD OLED panel with a refresh rate of 240 Hz with a peak brightness as reported by Windows at about 400 nits. The AW3225QF has a response time of 0.03 milliseconds gray to gray. It's also fully G-Sync and FreeSync compatible, which means any adaptive sync should be good out of the box. The AW3225QF supports 99% of the DCI-P3 color space. The panel also has a 178 degree wide viewing angle with a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio in both SDR and HDR respectively. As I mentioned already, it's got a 1700R curve and it's not the most aggressive curve, but it's just the right amount of curve for this to be noticeable. The AW3225QF has standard 100 millimeter Visa mounting on the rear. If you're looking at mounting the AW3225QF on an existing or compatible monitor solution, you should be just fine. Most of them support the 100 mil Visa mounting. Something interesting that I noticed was with the stand itself, it's got a hole on the bottom at the rear of it and you can pass the cables up through the stand and then it's got these two little cable holders on the back side of the panel and you can use that to hide all of the cables. And as you can see here, you can't see any of the cables plugged into the monitor. That's a nice little touch. As far as connectivity, it features a single DisplayPort 1.4 port with display stream compression, two HDMI 2.1 ports, and one of them supports eARC. So if you've got a soundbar or whatnot, you can use that for that too. It's good for consoles. It's also got three USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports. It's got one USB type C port, which is also USB 3.2 Gen 1, and that supports 90 watt PD charging. The AW3225QF has a three year warranty that includes coverage for OLED burn-in, and this is actually a very important thing with OLED monitors. However, as part of the mitigations that companies make for OLED panels, this one's got a custom heat sink and it's designed to cool the panel down. It's got an intake near the center of the monitor stand and exhausts heat around the entire edge of the panel. One thing I noticed with this was how much heat radiates off the panel. And I'm surprised by how much heat it is. It's warm, like even right now, I can feel it at about the distance I am. It's okay now because it's winter, but in summer, I don't know how this is gonna impact the panel. To be honest, like this is the hottest panel that I've had it through so far. It is really warm, even at this distance, like I said. The out of the box calibration is really nice for a gaming monitor. It's got Dolby Vision as well. Now, I didn't need to adjust anything in the panel or really nothing too much. The AW3225QF isn't an overly bright panel as it is out of the box. As I mentioned, it's only 400 nits and in HDR, there's no adjustability for brightness like we've seen with some other OLEDs recently, but in SDR at 400 nits, it's not too in your face. I hope that makes sense. Some monitors in SDR at their peak brightness are very bright and the AW3225QF isn't that bright. That could be a good or a bad thing, depending on who you ask. But to answer the question, does this work on consoles? This is one of those OLED panels that's designed for console gamers and PC gamers in mind. With console gaming, you're limited to 4K 120 Hertz though, but that's just the limitation of the console. For gaming, the AW3225QF is really freaking good. Well, it's really close to really freaking good. Uh, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Right, you'll see what I mean. If you don't know though, I'm a PC gamer, so I didn't test this with a console. I play COD 
and I've played enough COD on this to determine how good this is for gaming. The curve on the AW3225QF is a lot better than I thought it would be. And curve monitors have come a long way in the last nine or 10 years. It's a wonder why we don't see more curved OLEDs. And yes, it has been nine or 10 years since curve monitors became a thing. Makes me feel old. The gaming experience on this, as I mentioned, it's good. Now, I've enjoyed using this monitor to click on some heads, but again, as you're seeing, I'm a little bit rusty because I've been taking some time off gaming over the last month or so, just for some me time, you know how it goes. But overall, this is an exceptional panel for gaming. So what's the catch? Well, first of all, the USB-C port on here doesn't support DisplayPort. So you can't plug your laptop or your phone into it and use the AW3225QF as a monitor. Because the port is only downstream, you lose one of the biggest features that we see in monitors these days. That's the KVM. You can charge your devices with 90 watt PD charging, but that's a bit of a waste of a USB-C port. The KVM is, it's just not there. And that to me is a bit of a red flag. It just doesn't make sense to me. The next thing is the brightness for a QD OLED. It's only 400 nits and that's a bit dim for a QD OLED. To be honest, while gaming, it doesn't make too much of a difference, especially for the games that I play. But I think maybe the curve is the reason for it being a bit dimmer, but it's hard to say because I didn't make the panel. Lastly, it's to do with uh, transitions between refresh rates. This is something I noticed instantly. It has a noticeable flicker. And when I say noticeable, I mean, when you're on a loading screen in a game, you can see it flickering. I'm sure they could fix this with a firmware update. I know that ASUS has brought out new panels that don't suffer from this anymore. So maybe, maybe Alienware can do something similar. I guess the question is, would I personally use the AW3225QF? Put it this way, if I was gonna pick a monitor only for gaming and just purely for gaming, especially on console, I would say yes. But like me, most people don't just pick a monitor for a single task. I've come to expect features like a KVM and at a bare minimum, USB-C for DisplayPort. The fact that those two features are missing makes it pretty hard for me to recommend this panel. Also, the fact that this is an OLED panel and the peak brightness is only 400 nits. That's a bit of a miss too, because the AW3225QF is so unbelievably close to being my new gaming monitor. That's kind of what I'm doing at the moment, guys. I'm trying to find my own personal new gaming monitor. The curve is epic, but those other things, it just makes it really hard for me to recommend it at this price. It's almost 2,000 Aussie dollars and doesn't have USB-C input or a KVM, how does it miss those features? But let us know what you think of the Alienware AW3225QF. I really, 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 really wanted this to be my new gaming monitor, but I guess the search continues.